Good morning, everyone. It's very, it's very nice to see you all. So, let's start with the February birthdays. Who has a birthday this month? February birthdays. Oh, yay, Kathy and Carl. Very good. Happy birthday to you. Does anyone have any announcements? Well, I would like to announce. Oh, yes. Uh, session call, session meeting at um, noon or a little bit before if people can get their goodies. Today. Um, yeah, today. Right. Session today after refreshments in the hall around and, noon. And despite what the bulletin says, there is no lunch. Sorry oh. to say. Poor Yes, please. Um, Faith, I got an email from Faith that she sent to me yet last, late last night. Uh, she and Desmond were in a car accident on the way home from work. They're okay but they're bruised and shook, and so uh, that's why I'm here today, and we are not singing Spirit <laughs> Sing Through Me because I can't play it, so we're singing something that we don't have any piano player, and we're going to have a debut. Pat is going to give us the opening notes, so I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Tim. Uh, two things. One, we do have fellowship hour today, and it's a birthday cake. And, uh, second, oh, nice. Uh, because we're having a session meeting today, uh, we are not having a communications committee meeting today. So we are delaying the week to so communications week next week. And Very good. Thank you. In uh, the adult learning session. Very good. Thank you. See you there. <laughs> Did I hear anyone else? Oh. oh, thank you, Patty. So we're not having a communications meeting today because of the session meeting. Instead, we're going to bump it out till next week after the refreshments hour, and we're going to have it in the adult learning center. Thank you. Charmely, and then I'll come back over to Cheryl. And the deacons will be hosting the fellowship hour next Sunday, so we'll have our high our expectations set high. Please, thank you very much, <laughs> Cheryl. Yeah, thank you for the t the page markers. Yeah, yeah. Karen. Well, I noticed in the calendar that comes, you know, to us. And it said the deacons meeting was the, and it went down to the third yeah. Wednesday, and it really is this Wednesday. So the deacons meeting is this coming Wednesday, not the third Wednesday. I just got the wrong line. It's all right. It's all right. There's always going to be one. Maybe it changed. <laughs> so. <laughs> Truly all. Okay, please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Sing a new song, a song of thanks and praise. God, you sent your Son to be the light of the world, so that all may know the brightness of your love. Fill us with your grace this day, that we too may carry your light in the world. Please join us for him, uh, 481, Fill My Cup, Lord.
Join me in the prayer of confession. God, you show no partiality, yet we are not always as tolerant and accepting. Forgive our intolerance and help us to see as you see and stay steadfast in love. Amen. Happy are those who put their trust in God and delight to do God's will. For God makes our footing sure upon the rock of Christ. Please join us in the Gloria Patri. Come and 
But let's come to God in prayer. I'm going to let a few seconds of silence settle in. Oh God, we are so grateful for this place and space in which to worship, fellowship, enjoy one another's company, and especially support one another in this time of prayer. So many different things shared, medical issues, surgeries, uh, healing, thanks, uh, angst, a little bit of everything. And I have a hunch there's things that weren't shared that are on our hearts. So I looked up the names that were, were shared with the variety of things connected to them, Faith and Desmond Mark and Justin, Patty's sister, Cynthia, Gary and Darla, Mary Ellen, those who grieve, Bob, all those with dementia, those who care with those with dementia. And we now lift up our silent prayers for those names not shared. There are also other things, other situations about which we know that might be very close at home or very far away things that have caught our attention and, and drawn us to prayer and, and lift up those, those things and those, those places where troubling things have happened. Be with your church in whatever language or whatever kind of church as, as they seek to make a difference, wherever they are, to help, even as we do here in Crestwell. So, Lord, hear all these prayers, those spoken, those shared, those silent, those sighed. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples when they pray, to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You inclined your ear and heard our cries, and lift us, lifted us when we were low. Strengthen us and open our ears to the truth of your word. Amen. Our, they're both New Testament. Our first scripture reading today is Matthew 5, 
13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 12. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do seek wis speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Thanks be to God. I was remiss in my welcome of Chaplain Brown today, and I'd like to make up that distance now and welcome him back among us. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you. Again, I think Martha worked harder than I had to do this morning. You make it so easy on a guest pastor. Uh, it was wonderful to hear the choir this time. I was here in the summer when I think he had the head of the off, and not all churches can feel the choir anymore, so it's... Uh, wonderful to, to do that and to, to punt on the last second and do another one. That's wonderful. Even it was a cappella, you modulated a couple times successfully, and that was just wonderful. Just, just excellent. I am a little concerned. I was here in July and August. This is my third time on each of the three times. Something happened to the scheduled pianist that day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really the pianist all the time, right? <laughs> Just mine, yeah. I hope I don't jinx the, the, the pianist uh, for the day. So uh, I am chief chaplain at the Roseburg VA, and I get to do quite a bit of guest preaching. And, and I, just, I just love it because I was a Presbyterian pastor for 27 years uh, and then shifted a good 10 years or so ago. And, and this is the part of the ministry I would miss the most if I didn't get to do it again. Uh, Presbyterian churches, certainly, but also... Uh, there's a Lutheran church in Roseburg that's between pastors, so, and they had kind of a sort of an interim, and does this sound familiar? <laughs> and so I've been going there quite a bit, and last week I was at an Episcopal church in Sutherland 
That is a stretch, I've got to tell you. Um, we don't have the, the right ecclesiastical relationship with the Episcopal, so I can't do communion with them, but they do a prayer service and insert a, a, a sermon. Uh, the consistent thing in all these churches is they've been using the Revised Common Lectionary, um, so it didn't matter where I was, I was following through the lectionary text, I think as you have as well. So you're, you were hearing the, some of the same text that, that I was. If I wasn't preaching, I was hearing them because I sit in the pew and watch my wife work in Roseburg when uh, I can't be somewhere else. And we've been in Matthew for, for a, a little bit. So I want to first kind of just remind us where we're at on the plot. And I know there's a lot of biblical scholars here. So just bring up the file in your brain that says Matthew and scan with me up till now in Matthew. So Matthew begins, remember, with the genealogy, the begats, from Abraham uh, to Jesus. Then there's the Christmas story, the birth story. We're told to expect the name Emmanuel. God is with us. The wise men escape to Egypt, return. Fast forward a whole bunch of years. John the Baptist comes on the scene. Jesus is baptized. Jesus is tempted in the desert. He moves to Capernaum, sets up shop, calls his first disciples. And last week you heard the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. So we just move a few verses forward and just keep reading. Uh, we're in the Sermon on the Mount for a bit. There is so much in the Sermon on the Mount. So today it's salt and light. And it begins, you are the salt of the earth, okay? Now, in, in Greek, it tells us whether that you is, is plural or singular. If I just say you, you don't know if I mean you individually in English or you, all of you, unless you have the context, right? This is one of those cases in the Greek where it is second person plural. So this is you. It's the whole community who are the, the salt of the earth. Now, my family comes from Texas, both sides, both my parents, born in Texas, Del Rio is West Texas. My mom grew up there a few years and moved uh, to Nescoin, Oregon on the coast. My dad was raised in Texas his whole life, Texas A&M University, until I met my mom when my mom went back to Texas on a trip. They met, ended up in Oregon. I've been in Oregon my whole life. So I've got lots of time, lots of cousins. It is impossible to have a conversation with some of them without y'all coming into the conversation at some point, right? And I have to listen because sometimes y'all is singular or sometimes it's a small group. But if they mean a big group, it's all y'all. So this is all y'all are the salt of the world, okay? And also it is a descriptive thing. You already are the salt of the earth because Christ is in you already, because you are Christian community where love and acceptance and forgiveness abound. Salt, of course, is a preservative back in the day and adds flavor to food, right? We're told not to use it too much, but it's, it still adds flavor to food. Now, it can't happen on its own. If you've got the salt here and the food here, no benefit, right? You've got to connect them in order for the salt to do its thing. Just so we add goodness, we add flavor to the world, to those we come in contact with as part of the Christian community. So showing up is more than half the battle. If we're not where people are and don't add that saltiness, it's, it's not good. It's, it, it, it's separate. Noticing needs, opportunities where we can make a difference. And I ask myself at the end of the day, did I make a difference today? What did I notice that with my particular gifts and abilities, I can help? What did I notice? What, in hindsight, did I miss? What could I have done differently? What could I have done better? Because we're always a work in progress and this is telling us we're the community of faith, that we've got to connect with others to be a little salty when we can. Light, salt and light. Now, light, it's all over the scriptures. Genesis 1, verse 3. Let there be 
light. You can't get very far. The first act of creation, there's no sun yet. That's days to come. No sun, but there's light. Theologically, I think that means God's light is already there at the very, very beginning. Let there be light. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. So the scriptures. Jesus and John, I am the light of the world. It's just all over the scriptures. We are very blessed to have a Costco in Roseburg. I know you have one in Eugene. Ours is smaller and it's not so crowded. And whenever I used to have to go to the Eugene Costco and get gas, there'd be 10 lines. You know, I'd be all the way in the back. But we were looking for, for bedside lamps because ours were getting very, very old. And we found some lights there that were probably really desk lights, this big black base, the net comes up and there's the light. But there's this really cool little silver spot on it and you touch it and the light comes on. There's no switch. You just, you just touch it. Problem is, sometimes you're getting up and you bump it, and the light comes on. You touch it again, it gets brighter. Touch it again, it gets brighter still. Touch it again, and it goes off. It is the coolest thing in the world. And there's this spot by the, 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 the touch thing where you can put your cell phone, and it will charge. So we both have one on either side of our, our beds now. So let there be light at the touch of a finger. <laughs> And outside our, our, our bedroom window, we look west, we're in Winchester, just north of Roseburg, and oh, a mile and a half away across I-5, which we can see from the window, is a wood mill, wood products. And they're open 24-7 when things are going well, and so they can work at night. There's really bright lights there. Not so bright that it bothers us, especially with the, the curtain down, but it's a nice night light at, at, at night when the dog needs out and all that. But sometimes, like on a holiday or if they don't have enough wood, they're not open. It is really dark <laughs> over, over that where you notice the absence. And we realize that for, uh, throughout history, it's relatively recently that we could flip a switch and light's there. You know, a lot of people have candlelight and, and, and oil and, and, and that sort of thing. And we really notice that when it's in the middle of the night and the power goes out. And then it gets really, really dark. So the light's such a wonderful metaphor with, with, with Jesus. And he says, don't, don't put a bushel basket over, over that light. Don't, don't hide it. And, and he, the light doesn't go out. It's not like snuffy a candle. The light's still there. And it's not like when we put a shade over a light bulb that kind of diffuses it and makes it look nicer. No, this is hiding it. And Jesus says, no, don't, don't hide your light from from one another, let that light shine so you can be a guide for others with the particular need they have and you can meet. Especially for those that we meet that might be uh, in, a, in a sense of darkness emotionally and spiritually in their life. Yesterday morning I was called by the officer of the day, it's called at, at the VA, uh, to visit a veteran I knew well in our rehab unit. Uh, he received some, some bad news, and he was in a dark place. I walked in the room, and you can tell at a glance, just his countenance, it was just, just down. He'd received some bad news, and he was digesting it. And I know him, so I know he goes up and down during these times. So I do not walk in and say, oh, it's not that bad, you're going to get over it. No, I go there with him into that dark place to help understand what he's struggling with. Like the psalmist when they lament, woe is me. And that's where he was, knowing that a few days from now when I see him, he'll be in a different place. But for now, he's in a, in a dark place. I checked with the nurse afterwards. She saw the same report. It's really not as bad as he thinks, and he's going to be in a better place, and I know that. But he just needs to go through that dark place. I'll be him with there, in there, and then we're going to get him beyond that. Sometimes that is the way it works. And Jesus said in this text that all of this is a fulfillment and moving from the law, the Ten Commandments. He's not replacing it, he's, he, he's fulfilling it. And ironically, just this past week, I was reading Exodus of the Ten Commandments in the 20th chapter, and I was reading it in a brand new Bible translation. I grew up with the Revised Standard Version, way back, Portland, a Presbyterian church, 
which is in the line and lineage of the King James Version of the Bible. And then around the 80s, the New Revised Standard Version came out. Is that the one you're most familiar with in the pews? Okay. There's a brand new one based on the New Revised Standard. It is called New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. Really. It's N-R-S-V-U-E. So this has been going on through the pandemic. 50 different scholars were assigned one or more of the 66 books of the Bible. Other people reviewed their work. They added people from all kinds of different denominations, even people that weren't even Christian, to, to read the text who knew the languages, because languages changed and things happened with the manuscripts and, and meanings changed. So there is a new version out. And I've been reading through it slowly. And what's really fun with this is those verses that you know by heart forever, you notice the differences. You notice a word that's different. And you say, oh, I don't like that. Or, wow, I never thought of it that way. Works with both ways. So I'm having great fun. So I was very familiar with the law. I am your God. You shall have no others. You shall not make other gods, idols. Honor God's name. Remember the Sabbath. So the salt and, and light is somehow built on that foundation from the beginning. Wow, and he says at the end, you should have a righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. And I thought, oh my gosh, because they're just all about this legalistic righteousness. And I thought, you can't do that. That is impossible. My chaplain that was in Eugene has retired since we last met, so I have inhired, inherited some of his, his uh, veterans. And he was reaching out by video call. I do that a lot. I can do all kinds of stuff right from my desk. I can click on a link, and I'm on a national chaplain call. I'm talking to the person down the street. All kinds of wonderful things happen technology. So I just click a link, and this gentleman in Oak Ridge and I see one another. He's in his living room. I am my office. And we've been talking now every other week. It's probably been six times or so. So we know one another well. And he loves to try to stump me with Bible questions. So we have all kinds of fun. He's from a, a very conservative, independent background type of, of church. And he thinks, you know, Presbyterian guy, what do they know about the Bible? So he tries to stump me. We have, we have great fun. Yeah, we're a bunch of sinners, right? <laughs> Okay, so, but he has this, this thing that bothers him because of that legalistic background he comes from. He is afraid that he hasn't done enough. He hasn't worked hard enough to earn his salvation. And he kind of needs me to assure him, like we do at the beginning of our church services, prayer, confession, assurance of pardon, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you're forgiven. And I'm sorry, you cannot do enough to earn it on your own. You cannot do that. It just doesn't work that way. And then he goes, okay, I'm okay. But it's going to happen. I talked to him this Tuesday coming up. He'll do it again. But, but that's okay. I'll do it again with him. It's, it's, it, it's, it's okay. So this is really uh, kind of a hyperbole of the impossible. You cannot be that righteous. It's one of those things where everything is possible with God, and grace does abound. As I was going through this text, a quote came to mind that used to be on a plaque that was on my desk when I was pastor in Central Point, that my Medford, and something happened in the move to Roseburg 20 years ago and I lost it. But the quote is from St. Francis, you've heard it before, proclaim Christ at all times, if necessary, use words. Isn't that wonderful? Proclaim Christ at all times. So who you are, your, your actions, your, your essence. And if you have to, <laughs> use words. You know, we ought to be different than others in the world. Others just say, I want to have what, what they have, especially nowadays. Our world is in such a mess. There's people in so much darkness and in need of, of guidance, in need of Christ's love and acceptance and forgiveness, and that's who we are as the church, and we can bring that. You don't have to go across the world anymore. It's just all around us now. The world is in desperate need of some salt and light. I'm going to leave you with a reading from the Bible translation, The Message. Are you familiar with it at all? 
Presbyterian pastor wrote it, okay? Eugene Peterson. He was pastor in uh, Maryland at the time before he became a, pro a professor. And he taught his adult education class and he was frustrated with them because they weren't taking the scriptures you know, deeply enough, not digging in there. And he, he was talking to his wife and he said, I'm going to teach them Greek so they can really get into it. And the wife, being wiser, said, well, maybe you could come up with a way to share the biblical language in words that they could understand it. So for that adult Bible education class, he wrote, I think it was Galatians, he wrote a translation. And one thing led to another, and we have a whole translation called The Message, uh, which is very, very, very popular. So I'm going to read the exact same text from Matthew. Listen to these words from Eugene Peterson. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors of the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going to go public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God this generous Father we have in heaven. Amen. And we respond to the word with an affirmation of faith that is printed in your bulletins. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what it is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. In 461, Jesus, we just want to thank you.